So we've got a coffee machine and that cost us $20,000. Are you kidding me? Wish I was. $20,000. Hey guys, Janelle Copeland here. And listen, there are two questions I get about owning a bakery most frequently. One is how much does it cost to build a bakery and how much does it cost to buy a bakery? So in this video, we're gonna be diving into the cost of what it's like to build your dream bakery. Let's go. Welcome to Chic Sugars, this is Erica Oldham and she has this beautiful dream bakery that she built. Today she's gonna give us a tour of it and tell us how much it cost her. You came up with a budget, you decided to build it, so mm -hmm. walk us through the build out. The build. So we're looking at 3,000 square feet of dream bakery here. This started off as a jewelry store. When we got in, it was pretty much gutted but you can kind of see where the cases had been. And during COVID, we decided that we would kind of capitalize on what was going on and rents were super low and we were able to to negotiate a great rate. So we came in and essentially spared no expense and thought of, I think, just about everything as we kind of built what I think is a dream. So we're gonna start off with our custom countertops because um, of course there was nothing here before. So not only did I decide that I had to have uh, quartz countertops, but I also wanted a custom tile pattern. So we've got gold inlays and we did a state-of-the-art display case, which was roughly 6,000. Your countertops, I think, ran us about 13,000. And then we, of course, had to have these sneeze guards in order to you know, protect all of the goods. This was another $2,000 worth of just glass. We did open in the middle of COVID, so we had the grand idea of putting in a takeout window. So one of our windows had to get changed out and is now a walk-up to go. We've got more glass displays in the windows. I think our total bill for all of the glass installations was roughly $10,000. We decided to open up all the ceilings and once we realized how much space we had, we thought it would be a grand idea to add to our square footage without adding to our rent. So for $60,000, we added two mezzanines, one in the front, one in the back. This up here is our consultation space. I felt that it was really important to have a space to sit with customers and to plan their dream cake. We have a nice little table, we break out the champagne, we break out some cake samples and we design cakes. And in the front of that consultation space, as part of the mezzanine, we have a very expensive shelf, which allows us to display all of our cakes and we're able to do really cool holiday displays up there. With our custom countertops and cabinets, I had custom cabinets put in. I even thought of things like having slots put in for all of our packaging because organization is key. Because this is the focal point of the shop and branding is super important to me, I of course decided that I needed a four foot neon sign. Just in case you did not know where you were, you now know you are in Chic Sugars. And that was a cool thousand dollars. So we decided we wanted to sell coffee. So we've got a coffee machine and that cost us $20,000. Are you kidding me? Wish I was. $20,000. She's justifying a $20,000 coffee machine. Because we don't have one, we have two. We have a second one at our kiosk. This is part of the coffee setup. You wouldn't think it, but this right here, I think was about $3,000. And that's just for the simple drip coffee. And then if you come around, to our $20,000 giant espresso machine. You press a button, you get a shot of espresso, or an Americano, it's pretty much whatever you want. It calibrates the humidity inside the machine so that way you get a perfect cup of coffee every time. So like I said, 20 grand for one of those. Ice machine, I think that was about $1,800. All essential because I felt like coffee was gonna be important, especially with the bus stop. One thing that was really important was for this to be a well-lit space because I did go with the bold move of painting everything gray and black. Lighting was super important. Um, so we did have some really cool spider looking lights installed originally, but it just didn't make the space feel welcoming. So we went ahead and we just went with something that we felt was a lot brighter and these cost us $4,000. Was $4,000 something you were expecting to spend on front of house lighting? Not really, I, had been, I did not realize how much um, these pieces cost. Yeah. Whatever other money we had spent up here was gonna be wasted if you couldn't be up here and right. enjoy the space because it's all about the customer experience. Great lighting is important. Absolutely, I learned so much stuff. Actually, I learned that you can actually figure out what the lighting should have been before you have yeah. it installed because once the light is installed, it cannot be returned. I learned that oh. um, the hard way. So those other three lights I had installed in my house because I didn't <laughs> know what else to do with them. So this 
is our storage space. When you're buying in bulk like this, you have to have a place to store everything. So when we built this room, it was specifically for that. Even get an extra freezer in wherever we can, so this way we can store as much as possible. So we're in the main kitchen. This is where production happens. Obviously you have essentials, bowls, pots, pans. You've got big mixers. You've got six ovens. You've got a dishwasher. Walk through some of the things that are essential for your business now, but they were definitely like, we really want to have these. Absolutely. Right? Some of the essentials that I felt like we obviously needed to have were crazy enough, as many ovens as possible. Originally we started with only four, but it felt like it was gonna be wasted space and given that we expected to grow, it was important that we had as many ovens as possible. So we went with the six ovens. We felt like Vulcan was a stronger brand. Based on reviews, it had least amount of issues. So we splurged a little bit more and went with the Vulcan ovens, which were $13,000 for each stack. So that's a total of $39,000 worth of ovens. We went with a 20 quart mixer. We initially had two, and I believe these were 1,500 each, but we decided that we were just mixing too many times, so we went with the bigger mixer, which I will show you guys a little bit later. Some other essentials, obviously, are your three compartment sink that you're gonna be required to have as per the health department. So we went ahead and had one of those put in with your sprayers, because I felt that if we invested in a dishwasher and spent the $5,000 on that, by the time I actually had a person washing dishes, I would hit that $5,000 a lot faster and then this would be able to work all the time for that 5,000. So that felt like a necessary spend. One of the things I think that makes your bakery amazing and a dream for me is the walk-in refrigerator and freezer. Come around here, let's walk you guys through the walk-in. So we did a 12 by 12 walk-in cooler, bought shelves, put them all the way around so we have plenty of shelving. Through this door, we have a 10 by 10 walk-in freezer with a ramp to get up here. And for that, we have our hidden exit, which takes you over to our decorating side. Surprise. Ooh. So earlier I was talking about our 20 quart mixer. So we quickly found that we were having to make multiple batches of stuff and time is money. So we decided that it was worth it for us to sell one of our 20 quarts and invest in a big 60 quart. And this thing is a lifesaver. So with this, we're able to make batches of buttercream, which just allow for just a much faster workflow. So this way you're not constantly going back to make buttercream. So this was well worth the $7,000 I spent. Condensation is always an issue with fondant cakes. We have multiple fridges, which we know are humidity sensitive. So we've got a big three door fridge, which we call Big Cat. And we've got a single door fridge. And then we've got another two door fridge, two door fridge and a single door freezer because we like to throw our cakes in the freezer before we give them their fondant cover. And rather than have to walk into that one all the time, we have one right there. Every caker's dream is our sheeter. That was an absolute necessity for us. So we went ahead and invested, I believe this is the 20 inch, and then storage is key. So wherever I could get stuff underneath, we made it you know, a priority. It was important to us that we had a space to take pictures, but obviously tight on space. What we did was include this, it holds three rolls of picture paper. So you can roll down any backdrop you want. And then we also installed a ring light, which we mounted to the wall. So this allows us to take all of our photos for our cakes or for whatever it is we're promoing for the season. And you can change these out. So we have other ones, but it's really simple. We found it on Amazon, well worth it. So this whole setup cost you how much? Maybe 200 all in. If we mess it up, we just cut it off yeah. and keep going because it's like 16 feet of paper. And this is one of my favorite spots of the bakery. You have so much great storage, but yes. also your favorite things in here, which was a big splurge, are the Husky workstations. Yes. Can you walk us through those? Yes. So the Husky workstations were an absolute non-negotiable for me, um, just because as a decorator at heart, it was super important that all my tools were always organized. So we actually bought these from Home Depot. They are about $550 each. Because we had the quartz from up front, we had some remnant parts. We actually took the wood pieces off the top of these and put these quartz pieces on top. They're not mounted in any way. They're just so heavy that there's no way you're getting them off of here. So we replaced that because we figure when we're filming, these just look prettier as you're kind of watching us work. They came with these cool little organizing trays that we put in here. We've got everything from our water pens to skewers, paint brushes. There's so many drawers, there's so many compartments. 
And the best part about this thing is that it actually plugs in and it's got power on the side. So we're able to charge our phones, we're able to run lights, we use our steamers, our airbrush machines, they all plug in right to the side. So for the 550 a pop, I think that they were well worth it and it's probably one of my absolute favorite things in here. So one of the most expensive things that you really just don't see and most people don't really think about is power because you have all this equipment in here and the last thing you want happening is for a breaker to trip, which used to happen a lot at my old bakery, so it was things that I thought of. So we actually had more power added. We put in transformers, so this way, no matter how much equipment I added, I knew that I wasn't gonna trip a breaker. I've literally had to have electricians come in in the middle of the day because my fridge turned off because it couldn't handle the load on that particular circuit. So that is one of the big things that we invested in. I think we spent almost $70,000 on the electrician alone, just making sure that we had enough power in this space to run it. So you said something about the cuts in the floor, which you had to pour the floor, right? Yeah. Before you poured the floor, you had to put cuts in there, go down like four feet. Yes, so we basically, across the entire shop, we cut perfectly good flooring so we could drop in plumbing and run it from waistlines to the front and make sure we had grease traps, make sure we had hand washing drains. sinks, drains in every room because those are required by health code. So we literally dug up the cement and then four feet below the cement dug in to drop in drainage so that total cost was over a hundred thousand dollars just to put in the proper plumbing so i'd say that the bakery is obviously full of necessities but one thing that i see business owners kind of skimp on is a place to actually work you have a beautiful office space that allows you to kind of separate yourself from the production and come up here and plan your menu look at the books, look at the numbers, yep. and so walk us through the office. Originally, this was supposed to be storage space, but it is an essential. At my old shop, I had to let someone go, and because I had no office to do it in, I had to let them go in the parking lot because that was the only place that I could have a private conversation, which just felt so awkward that having an office space where I could come up and close the door and have private convos with team members was something that I felt was really important. Conference table, so my assistant is usually at one end, I'm at the other end and are able to handle everything we need from the office end up here. But I did want some bright lighting because again, I decided to paint everything black. So we added some really cool sconces, a couple pieces of art, and then also, you know, you need all your network capability up here. We have access to our security cameras and just again, the important business side of everything happens up in this space. All of the planning and what you're gonna do to run the business happens up here, so I love it. So between like ventilation and plumbing and drains and all of the build out total, mm -hmm. you had to pay for architect plans, you had to pay for city permits, all mm -hmm. the permits, right? Yep. With everything that you put in to make Shake Sugars what it is, what is the total cost that you invested? Grand total, $750,000. Okay. After everything that you've spent, we're gonna have some people that are sticker shocked. We're gonna have some people that go, I wish I could do that, which yeah, we all wish we could, right? Yes. But at the end of the day, what I love about your story is you had a proven concept, a proven business, you saved, you invested in yourself, you took it to the next level, and then you sought out investors. So many people that are watching are maybe working from home, which I started working from so home, I. you did yes, too. Did. And they're wanting to get into a brick and mortar quicker than 11 years. What do you say to that? I say take your time. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And you almost need the other steps in between to prepare you for the next step. Yeah. So working from home, and then ultimately I rented kitchen space. I rented three or four kitchen spaces. And then I started off with a very small space just to make sure that it was a proven concept before I took every next step. Yeah. Had I tried to do something like this year two, I would have been done by week three. Right. Um, I wouldn't yeah. have made it that far because nobody knew who we were. We didn't have a customer base to rely on, at least now or when we started this, uh, this location, we had a customer base. We had a solid base yeah. that was itching for us to open. Every step is required to kind of Get you to the next yeah, level. you don't want to sort of yeah. leapfrog this part. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. It's a beautiful bakery, and I hope that if you're watching this, you stay in your own lane, on your own path too, because everyone's journey is going to be different. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a ton. Go follow Chic Sugars on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video.